Hello there. Let's look at an unexpected horror franchise where a group of swimmers are terrorized by underwater fish. I'm of course talking about... Piranha. But before I go into that series, I'm going to talk a little bit about actual piranha. Found mostly in the Amazonian rivers of South America, the piranha actually bite and eat various animals for protection rather than for hunger. They are actually quite a scared species, and when piranhas do take a bite of human being, it's not on purpose. Now, they are definitely extremely dangerous fish, but there's a reason why piranha travel in schools. And sometimes, they might even attack each other, especially the smaller ones. So, taunting a piranha is not the right idea, but needless to say, they're not quite as vicious as these films portray. Piranha came about following the massive success of Steven Spielberg's Jaws, and famed B-movie producer Roger Corman wanted to capitalize on that and create his own killer fish flick. John Sayles was asked to create a story in a similar vein as Jaws, and thus the idea of Piranha being set loose on a lake was born. To direct, editor Joe Dante was hired after recently making his feature directing debut with Hollywood Boulevard. Instead of going the full-on horror route, they decided to turn it into a comedy, and the final result is actually a pretty good film. The basic premise revolves around a group of ferocious piranha who are accidentally unleashed into a lake where a sun camp and a new water park have opened. With its very minimal budget, Dante was aware that there was only so much he could accomplish getting terror from those tiny fish, but the effects are actually very impressive. A couple of notable effects wizards actually worked on Piranha in the early starts in their careers, including Phil Tippett, Rob Bottin, and Chris Wallace, as well as editor Mark Goldblatt. They worked very hard in trying to make the Piranha convincing, and they managed to pull it off, through even the simplest of techniques. And it's believable, especially when seeing the bloody bites on the victims. However, in the end, a horror film has to succeed in the human and script elements, and Piranha certainly does. Paul and Maggie are both likable protagonists, and their banter provides some very funny moments, especially when they have to deal with the army sent to deal with the escaped fish. However, there's a heart to the film, especially in regards to Paul's daughter and how they play up her fear of swimming. And of course, this being a Joe Dante film, we get an appearance from Dick Miller. And you know what that means? It's time for the Joe Dante drinking game! Yeah, salt water. Cell screenplay not taking things seriously also aids in the fun of the production. It's aware of the silliness of the plot, though the characters are so fleshed out and have meaningful dramatic moments. It's that strong combination that made Piranha very successful in its release, and Steven Spielberg was even a big fan of the film, thus leading to him hiring Dante to direct Grumblings and Inner Space. Following the success of Piranha, an Italian producer became interested in making a sequel. When production was almost ready to start, he hired a visual effects artist from Corman's studio to direct the film at the last minute. That young man was called James Cameron. Yes, that James Cameron. However, it was a disastrous production with the producer calling every single shot, not even allowing Cameron into the ending room. So how did James Cameron's unofficial directorial debut turn out in the end? Well, while there are a couple moments where James Cameron's future talents responded, Piranha 2 The Spawning is a stupid and poorly done effort. Dialogue is awful and wholly unnatural, not helped by the film's one-dimensional characters and terrible acting. The supporting bit part characters don't help much either, as they're not funny, but rather annoying and simply written to be piranha chow. Most don't even finish the story arcs. However, the most ridiculous parts are the scenes with the piranhas themselves. The first second one flies and bites a victim in the neck, it's hard not to laugh at the stupidity. I don't know what the filmmakers were smoking when they thought of flying piranha, but it must have been really strong. The effects are bad, and it's just so hard to take the whole thing seriously. Joe Dante's Piranha had a comedic edge to it, but it's no suspense and characters you cared about. I didn't find any of that here. Thankfully, Cameron moved on to better things with his alien sagas and three-hour romances. Following that failure, the Piranha series lay dormant for a while, as both Joe Dante and James Cameron went on to bigger productions, and New World Pictures developed other projects. In 1995, Roger Corman produced a made for television remake featuring a young Mila Kunis, but it's very hard to get a copy of it. However, recently, Alexander Aya directed a semi-remake titled Piranha 3D, which sought to bring back the silly Devil May Care B-movie, and while critics gave it good notices, I personally disliked it. I found it to be incredibly stupid, which I understand is the point, and I'm all for a fun B-movie, but this takes forever to actually get to the fun. 
For the first hour, we're saddled with uninteresting characters and bad performances and just awful, awful dialogue. Around the hour mark, the piranha carnage actually begins and we see the filmmakers actually being creative. That final half hour is just a lot of fun. Shame that it's preceded by so much unnecessary padding. I'm all for the idea behind Piranha 3D, though like watch it on DVD, so no 3D, though it's painfully obvious where those shots are, but I just didn't find it well executed for bulk of the running time. And earlier this year, a sequel named Piranha 3 Double D was released, albeit with a very limited release, though it shockingly opened nearby. I haven't seen it though. Personally, if you want to see an interesting and funny take on the Jaws formula, give Joe Dante's Piranha a watch. To quote a famous ad campaign for a different killer fish flick, see it before you go swimming. See you next time.